to California, seen the sights and people there. Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Grace. And we're California, California Travel videos. videos. And welcome to part six. We finally reached the last segment. My favorite, we're going to talk about boys and their toys. Electrics and electronics. Yes, what do you think, Grace? The things that keep him up late at night. <laughs> There's something to be said for that. So we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at all the different things you might want to have to um, do some preventive diagnostics as well as have some fun things, GPSs and the like. So let's go ahead and go off to segment six. Are you ready? Ready! Okay, here we go. We have maybe about, oh, a couple dozen different things here as we take a look across. So I'll kind of go through, through them slowly, but um, we'll start over here maybe at this end. And maybe this one isn't exactly electric and electronics, but um, something that is a tool. And this for those of us who have simulators. And I thought first, oh, my car is a simulator? What the heck is that? I don't know if I don't want to know about it. But those are the wheel covers, the wheel caps, and um, to get them off, you can actually damage them if you're not careful. So this is a tool that's used to uh, extract the wheel simulator to take it off to get to the valve stems, and if you need to, change the wheels and tires, okay? Could also so, have that next to our bed. I'm not sure I should ask what that's about. Tell us more. That looks pretty powerful. Oh, I see. This is a um, equalizer tool is what you're referring to. Yeah, we could equalize anybody right. attempting to equate. Another one, if you need to have a spark. So Ooh. this is um, actually magnesium and a little striker. So I don't know if we'll get some, but I'm going to give it a try. One, two, three. Yeah, I think I saw a little spark. So if you really got it going, you know, if you were Tom Hanks and what was the movie? Castaway. Oh, there I saw one. Yeah, so you can go ahead and this is a survival spark magnesium that rubs across this kind of like a little sawtooth blade. So there you go. Something nice to have. Sometimes, you know, you get a lot of wind and things going in your stove and it doesn't want to start. Okay, in no particular order, here is something that I already use um, for camera gear. This is another one I got though to have because sometimes you want to have with your camera gear and another one that's with your RV, and that is a work light. So um, this one is Nightcore HC50, and it looks like it um, gives off a pretty good amount of light. This is um, a headgear, and um, you can actually wear them at night, and when other kids see you, they say, look, he looks like he's Cyclops, man. So it has different lights on it. Um, red light, Grace, do you know why they have a red light yeah. as well as the white? So that your eyes can adjust easier. So yeah, you keep your night vision. So if you're in darkness, you want to keep that. Um, it does also come with um, the batteries as well as a charger, which is nice. I like that feature that it's got charger. And when you've got electronics, you have got a lot of chargers to take care of. Okay, gaffer's tape, which is better than duct tape. Um, it doesn't have residue, but if you want to go all the way, then you get the Gorilla, Gorilla tape. So when we want to bind things together, hey, here you go. Grace is biting her lip. We won't go any further on that one. Okay, so fuses. Yes, you want to have fuses in case something pops. And so, you know, you have different amperage that goes in. So always keep fuses before they go out. So this company I thought was really high quality. Quasar Beam, you see them on Amazon. And then I got some from another company. And I think that um, they're probably going to be okay, but um, you can see that they're nowhere near as good a value as the one I got from this Quasar Beam. So I highly recommend those. A TPMS. What do you think about that? TPMS. TPMS. I don't know, that's something that is. Tomorrow isn't... promise me. Tire pressure monitoring system. Oh, okay. So this is something where you take each of these six sensors which have wireless that sends a signal to the monitor and you go ahead and activate each one so they know which one is for the tires and then when you're out on the road maybe you've got an inside on your dualies if you have to happen to have four in the back like we do and you wonder is the one on the inside high or low or what's going on you can know if something starts to go low when you're out on the road tire pressure monitoring system Next, now this is right down Grace's alley. 
This is to maximize your cell signal in the vehicle by WeBoost. And this is the X model. Um, they have a M model, but the X gets even better signal. You may get about 20 plus decibels, whatever that means, right? That means it's rather than 10 times, it's 100 times the electronic signal strength. Yay. It's kind of like a logarithmic if you're into that, kind of like um, earthquake, seismic type things. But in this case, what it does is it boosts your signal. And inside it, what it is, is a receiver and a transmitter, a transmitter antenna that goes on the outside. And they say keep them about up to 20 feet away from each other so they don't oscillate back and forth and reproduce its own signal because you want to get the cell signal from the outside which is very weak and then inside you want to put as close as you can your in this case I have a iPhone 6 put it near the receiver and it rebroadcasts or amplifies the signal and so to go along with that you want to have an antenna now you can either get a small whip antenna like this which operates I guess about one to two gigahertz band which is the Wi-Fi, excuse me, with the cell frequencies, or what the truckers would use would be something like this. This is Wilson Company. When they say we, that stands for Wilson Electronics, but this is a, uh, a bigger antenna, and it has a loading coil if you're into that kind of a stuff. And this one, what it does is it has a bracket on it. Normally, the truckers would put it right there on their um, rear view mirror, something like that. In our case, though, we're going to put that in the back. So we're going to have the repeater in the front, 20 feet away. This is going to be in the back. And what that's going to connect to is to our ladder that goes to the roof. So it'll connect right to the ladder. Is that like throwback to Breaker Breaker? How about it? You got a copy on me, Breaker Breaker? Um, CB is a low frequency. doesn't go very far. But, uh, well, actually, doesn't with the powers there. But something like that. You're on the right track, though, Grace. And you get like these little cables to change from one polarity to another, depending upon what it is with the different types of cabling. So, okay, next. How about if we go into charger? Yeah, you know, if you're going to have your RV sitting for a while and you do have just regular household current, you can keep kind of a little float charge with it. So this is Keyline chargers, the uh, Mini Pro and this automatic battery charger it just provides a little trickle charge. It isn't made for if you run the battery dead to charge it up right away. I have others for that, but this I thought would be nice to have. So you can have this both for your cab battery as well as for your coach battery. Okay, next up. Now we're getting to something much more serious. Anti-gravity. What is anti-gravity? Well, it is a jump starter system, and so uh, we have one of these already for a car that's smaller, but the XP10 is really good because it can start up like a diesel. And I guess we haven't shown you Rihanna yet. That's coming soon to a California travel video theater near you soon. Yeah, but this will provide the high car starting current so that you can go ahead and get a diesel like five liter like ours. So. And by, believe it or not, it did come with a mini tire inflator um, air pump. And, uh, you know, I think that we need something a little bigger with this. It says that it goes up to about 80 PSI, but I don't think it's that big. We need something that draws a little bit more current, provides a little bit more power. So when you get um, air pressure that has to go 80 to 100 PSI, it will handle that. Well, okay, now we're going to be talking about how do you get the voltage to your um, motorhome, your RV. And some of them make um, 50 amp connections that you hook up to at the RV park. Some of them are 30 amp connections and some of them are 15 amp connections. So what's that's all about? Well, in the United States, we use the Edison type plugs, you know, the two vertical plugs and then the one ground plug that goes with those. And if that's all you've got, then you're going to hook up to your home plugs. But um, that doesn't hook up to an RV like ours, so you need to have something that goes to um, 30 amps. So this has a lot more current that it will have to go to the RV. If you have a generator, it probably has something like this, unless you have a really big one like a Class A motorhome, which will have 50 amps. We'll get into that in a second. It looks like a Walmart sad face. 
It does, but this whole thing is called like a dog bone, affectionately, because it looks like a dog's <laughs> bone. And hopefully our dog Kaliki doesn't think it's a dog uh -oh. bone and chew through the insulation. But of course, if you only come in with 15 amp, then that's all you get out to your RV. And if that's the case, you can't run your air conditioning or heavy load draw, or it's going to have problems. So um, anyway, that is, if you need to adapt to 110 volts for just light usage, probably you couldn't run your microwave oven, but um, light things. But then here is if you do have where it's only got 50 amp connection, and you certainly don't want 50 amps to go in your motorhome. So anyway, this um, just adapts it from the, what did you say the face was? Sad face? The Walmart sad face. Walmart sad face from 30 amps to go to hooking up if you only have 50. But most RV parks will have the 30 amp. Now when you go to an RV park, you want to have something like this um, just for insurance. So this is a more than a surge protector, but um, this is a model 3, 4, 730, um, and this is for um, the amperage, a 30 amp model that we have. And so what this does is it makes sure that your 120 volts, or 117 I guess really, root mean square, and that it has the proper amperage, but much more important than that, what it does, Grace, and friends out in YouTube land and Facebook or wherever else you're watching this, is you have the ability to make sure that you don't have any spikes. You make sure that you don't have any low voltage. It has a brownout because a lot of other people are running their air conditioning in the RV park. Yes, then it will make sure that it conditions the right voltage, or if not, it just shuts it down and says, sorry, you can't use it because it could damage your electronics inside. And also if they have a bad neutral, bad ground, those sorts of things if you get into that. Additionally, we have a Garmin, which is made for RVs. Yeah, so you want to know is that when you get going down a narrow road in a covered bridge, you know, is it going to be more than 11 and a half feet? If not, you don't want to be going down a one lane stretch and have 20 vehicles behind you and then say, oh, sorry, everybody. Let's all back up. So yeah, it's used for lots of things, but having something besides the cell phone is a good idea. There's um, other companies that make them like um, Rand McNally makes one. So whatever is for you. I also got it with a hood so that when it's um, sunny outside is you can actually read the doggone thing. Okay. What else do you have in your toy box? Okay. I don't even know if I can remember what this stands for. What is it, ODBI? ODBI. <laughs> this hooks into your connector for your engine diagnostics and um, it gives you a digital readout. So right here is a digital readout screen and it has about 60 or 70 different indicators on your engine performance, what's going on. Um, most notably, most of us like to know what is our gas mileage. If you don't have one that's built into your dash, you can have that, but also uh, taking a look at some of your temperatures and other things, what's going on in your RV. And it comes with a nice little mount so that you can have it where you can keep it. One of the last things in the electronics is a 12 volt extender there. And that is actually right here. This is not Blistex, not for your lips, but this is actually Blistex company. We can see that it takes 12 volts and extends it when you want to go back to where we showed you before, such as you've got maybe a fan or something electronic, um, or maybe like we had there before where it was that um, electric blanket, things like that. You wouldn't want to run too long. Of course, you're going to discharge your battery unless your car battery is running. And um, here's another one. This one actually looks like it's a little bit heavier duty um, in terms of the amperage that we'll have go through because you don't want voltage drop. So this one is tire tech. And lastly, it's something I just, um, not real electronics, but I just got it because as I'm going to get ready to start putting some things in the walls, you know, sometimes I can use my 3M um, Velcro tape. Um, really powerful stuff. But other times you want to have um, a rivet. So I got a Stanley rivet gun and um, an assortment of rivets. So we are going to be well taken care of when we start putting things into the inside walls. No, not the outside walls. I don't want to have to start doing problems with um, different types of leaks and the like, even though we saw earlier where we have different compounds to hopefully take care of that. But at any rate, I think that's all for electronics. Grace, do you have any questions? What do you think? 
Um, I don't have any questions, but I do have kudos because I would go with like a toolbox, a wrench, and a screwdriver and a lot of prayers because I don't know anything <laughs> about any of these kind of toys. That's, and we, that's your market. Right. We have those too. I've already had those, so I'm not going to show you any of those tools right now. But yeah, some of those things you bring up are very good is you want to have some regular tools, wrenches and the like, screwdrivers. And so if you don't have those in your kits, you would need to buy those also. Maybe, maybe people can help give us some ideas of other things we might need or have come in handy for them. As always, we look forward to your comments, critiques, and until next time, happy trails to you until we meet again. Have you been to California? Seen the sights and people there? Walked the streets of sleepy sea towns? Tasted salty ocean air?